about to fight some battles. Amen. God, in the Old Testament, many times when an enemy would come and, and show himself strong to a yes. king, God would, they'd seek the prophet, and the prophet would either say, stay, or the prophet would say, today I have given the enemy into your hands. Rise up and go to battle. And I believe that's what God is saying to you today and to me today. I have given the enemy into your hands. Now, rise up and go to battle. Rise up and fight the enemy. And how do we fight the enemy? We fight him on our knees in prayer. We fight him with the name of Jesus Christ, the name that is above every name. We fight him with the blood that was shed on the cross where nothing can go over it. Nothing can go through it. We go forward with the weapons of our warfare. And they're not carnal, but they're mighty through God pulling down strongholds, casting down imaginations. That's how we fight our battles. And we fight the fights and battles this morning. Glory to God. I sense the presence of the Holy Spirit. I knew, I knew this week that God was going to meet us in this place. I knew and I sensed it in my spirit that he wants to reveal himself to you strong and mighty. He wants to show you today who he is and what he's capable of. Some of you have, God has moved in your life and you have uh, forgotten. You, you, you said, well, he did one time. But I ain't seen him in a while. He moved in my life one day, but I, I don't know where he's at today. And you begin to hang your head down. And you begin to shrug your shoulders and throw your hand up and say, Well, I guess I've done something. I guess he's gone somewhere. I don't know why. But today God wants you to know this. He's going to reveal himself to you one more time. He's going to show you his strength and his might and his power. He's going to demonstrate from on high his glory in your life. Amen. All you got to do today is believe it. Amen. Open up your eyes and he'll reveal himself to you. Amen. My God, I feel like a light on my palm. You show me your God, I'll show you mine. Yes. You do what you do, you enemy. Can you do everything you want to try? You can come in with deception. You can come in with turmoil. You can come in with sickness and lack. You can come in with all that. And then you just stand back and watch my God now. And he's going to come and consume everything. Boy, God. Hallelujah. Oh, I sense his presence. We're going to pray. And while we're praying, Miss Shirley, you can go ahead and get the kids. And you can go to kids' church. And, and so, and then we're going to. As you go up the stairs, we're going to pray for you when you're going up the stairs. Amen. So all the kids that want to go, you can go with her. Yes. And we appreciate you, Miss Shirley. Yes. Yes. Hey, let me tell you something. It's a sacrifice to do what she's done. And, you know, and yes. while we had the coronavirus, she was, she was like, boy, I sure am enjoying being in church. <laughs> she needs to be. Yes. So we need volunteers to help her. So that she can come in and experience what you experience right now. Glory to God, let's throw that out there. <clears throat> All right. So we're about to pray. There's a couple things we want to pray about. Uh, Lisa, I want you to come. And you're going to have to, Papa, you're going to have to get the baby. And uh, Lisa, I want you to come. <clears throat> uh, Sherry and Gail, if y'all don't mind, y'all come too. And uh, <clears throat> because I know specifically, that there's needs here that we're going to pray about. Yes. And God is in control. Amen. Now, when we prayed the other day, I felt like God is already taken care of it. Yeah. But uh, I said, you know, I'm going to hold it back and let everybody pray. God knows. So we're going to pray. There's a one, I think this is a once and for all moment. I believe that. It's a once and for all. God's just going to fix it. Yes. He's going to fix anything that might come out. Now listen to me. The Holy Spirit spoke to me as I was walking and praying this morning. Daryl, I think it's over. Amen. Monday 
it's a men only thing, so we, we, we don't knock you women out, but it's something that we, we talk about things that we can talk about. Yes. But we do in here, and then we pray about everything. So this past Monday we were praying, and I, God had spoke to my heart to go and see Chris and that's just a miracle down there. Amen. So I said, well, tell me. I said, where you at on this? God. Where you at on that? God. I said, okay. I need to know what, what can, what will, what do you need that man can't do? And she wrote it on this list. And we prayed over it. And uh, three quarters of that's already been done. something. Now, you don't have to write a book, but you can write on here what you need. And then, you know, you don't, nobody has to know it. You fold it up. Ain't nobody gonna look at it. Okay? And we're just gonna leave it here right. on this altar. This is your opportunity to see God move. Yes. You hear what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. I can tell you miracle after miracle that I've seen this week. I told, I told uh, somebody yesterday, I said, I needed this week. Mm -hmm. Ronnie, I needed to see the hand of God move. Mm -hmm. And so, it, if he'll do that, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> what would he do for you? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> we're going to pray. And when we, uh, and, and you can come up here, you can come up here anytime. And write something down, fold it up, and we're just gonna leave it. We'll stick it where it won't fly off. And nobody can get in there and look around that. And you just leave it here. And let God move. Yeah. You say, well, that's silly, Brother Don. Well, I do a lot of silly things. <laughs> it was silly, you know. Yes. I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> just put it, and then you get it back. Yeah. Just put your put a mark on that that's only your mark. That's right. that's and then when God does it, you come back and get it. Glory to God. Why, why, why dip in this old dirty river? I got rivers in my own land. Why do I got to get in this river? Because oh, God is silly. That's what I'm going to do it. We have authority. We're going to speak at this moment. So let's pray. Let's pray. Craig, you, you do the anointing this moment. But you know it, you know it, you know it. There's different needs here. If you've got a need, you can come. We'll pray for you too. It's open this moment. This is how we fight our battles. By praying and giving it to God. By standing on his word yes. and standing on his promises and believing him, what, my, what yes. might look like foolishness to someone else yes. is wisdom to God, is the plan of God to move. Yes. You stretch your hands this way. Let's pray. Father, I thank you. You're a miracle working God. You're a healer. You're a deliverer. You are a restorer, Lord God. Things that are broken, you can put back together. You can move. The bomb, the bomb of Gilead, Lord, is a healer. You speak it this morning in Jesus' name and strengthen you. And God strengthen you. And we say, this is it. This is it, nothing else. And we bind the enemy. We put a hedge of fire around this couple. And we say nothing else will touch their body. Get off of them. Leave them alone. Lord Jesus, they got work to do. You do it for us. In the name of Jesus, we believe that you do. We stand, God, believing this morning. I, I rebuke the enemy and 
I, I speak, God, uh, over the demonic forces that try to tag around and shadow around and try to come back to kill. But you've come to give life and give it more abundantly. And we speak authority in the name of Jesus, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Lord God, move. I pray, Lord, you are a mover. You are a shaker, Lord. God, you do what no man can do. Lord, work your miracle, work your power. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord God. From the top of his head to the sole of his feet. Lord, let the power of God reach over and through God, God, we thank you, Lord, that your light drives out darkness. That your name, God, causes the devil to tremble. God, that you have the power and the might to do it. Lord, you're, you've given us heart. You're the king over sickness. Lord, God, you're the king over disease. God, you're the king over it all. We speak it now. God, we release it. We pray for those babies upstairs, Lord. God, let the anointing that we are sensing right here just move into their life, God. Put something in them today that they'll, they'll never be able to shake off and that they will never be able to pull off. God, touch them today. I believe you're doing it, God. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Come on and give the Lord a good great praise this morning. Hallelujah. Listen, it's right here. Before you leave this morning, you can do it anytime. It, I, listen, you walk up here while I'm preaching. God might speak to your heart. No matter. You walk up here. You put it down. God's going to move. There's a pen here. There's a paper here. So, we're just going to do the silly thing. Some people say, why do y'all sing in your church? That looks silly to me. Mm. That's how we find our path. Right. Amen. 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 Last week we, we preached. And I could go in about five different. I, I could tell you things today that uh, that God is speaking to my heart. But you know, I got to get focused and say the word for the day. What God has for us today. Yes. Because God does have a word for you. This morning, specific word. He wants to do something. Last week, we, we, we talked about what are you thinking? And this week, we're going to talk about what were you thinking? What were you thinking? And let me give you a scripture this morning. You can find it in 1 Corinthians 3. And turn to verse 18. Listen, God's been doing great things for Camille Place. Amen. All you got to do is just go look out the back door and take a look and you'll see what happened this week. And many, many great things. God is doing great work in our church. Yes. In the hearts and the lives of people. That's a couple of things that we want you to make a matter of prayer. And we've been trying to, this, this died on us, and we've been trying to get companies and people to come and everybody talked to somebody the other day and uh, uh, they gave us a name of a place, and that place we had already contacted, and they telling us it would be June 28th before they could even come up here and give us a quote. But we've got some contacts. Now, men may say, I don't have time. I can't get the material. I, they don't, you know, they're back ordered because it's not coming. To, they can't get the components or whatever. But God can do it. Yes. Yes. Let me tell you what we're wanting to do. We want to take that down. We want to put a screen up here and a screen up here. And we want to put a screen back there. Not that kind of screen, but like a big TV. You know what I'm talking about. So that, so that I mean, that's what we need. Okay? Those things, how much they cost, we can get all this done for just about how much you pay for that. Okay? So that's what we want to do. So you know specifically what we need. We need to get that. So that they they can control it from here, but they'll be able to see back there. And so, y'all know what we need? Do you know what we need? Yes. You believe God can do it? Yes. Well, let's pray about it. Amen. Let's get it done. We've already got the 
the live stream going except one more thing. Our internet and all the internet we get here is it's just not what I think we need. And so we've got to get that done. But we are doing, uh, we're recording this morning for anybody who wants to watch the service. They uh, will upload this afternoon. So we're still doing that. And it's, uh, it's, it looks really good. And my son-in-law, Justin, hey Justin, everybody wave to Justin. Hey, he uh, is real good at and he puts the graphics and everything on there. So it looks good and it's doing good. But we need that internet to get it right. That's what we need. Okay? What were you thinking? 1 Corinthians 3, verse 18 says this. Let no one deceive himself. Look at that. If any among you thinks, look at that, he is wise in this age, let him become a fool. That he may become, he may become wise. For the wisdom of this world is folly with God. There's a lot of folks that think they're smart. For it is written, he catches the wise in their craftiness. And again, the Lord knows the thoughts of the wise. They are futile. Last week when we talked, we said that you need to make your calling and election sure. Because what you think you have will be taken away from you. So what you think may not be what reality is. You may be fooling yourself. See, John 5, verse 39, I'm going to give you some scriptures. You can write these down as I'm giving them this morning and then go back and read them later. You ain't got to flip it back and forth, okay? He says this, and this is Jesus talking. And he's talking to the Pharisees and Sadducees. He says, you search the scriptures because you think in them you have eternal life. And then he says, and it is they that bear witness about me. Yet you refuse to come to come to me that you might have life. So I'll say it again. Make your calling and election sure. And if you're studying the scriptures and you don't find Jesus in there, then you're blind. Because he's in there from Genesis to Revelation. He's everywhere in there. Right. Jesus is there. If you're dependent, I'm going to say this again, if you're dependent on good works, if you're dependent on some type of form or ritual or membership for salvation, you're a fool. Yeah. And you're going to be disappointed. Now, I'm not talking just about having hurt feelings. I'm talking about the disposition of your eternal soul. So it's going, to be, it's going to be more than just a disappointment when you stand before God and he says, depart from me, I never knew you. And you, you, you you're saying, well, I, I knew you. I, I, I joined the church. I did that. But you never knew. So I'm going to tell you, make it calling in the election. Get your thinking straight. I just wanted to say that one more time. Then I want to, I want to say, what are, what are we thinking when we think we know more than God? What, what are we thinking? I just gave you a scripture. Let me give you a note. 1 Corinthians 8, verse 1 and 3. Through 3. Now concerning food offered to idols, <clears throat> we know that all of us possess knowledge. Look at this. This knowledge puffs up. But love builds up. If anyone imagines that he knows something, he does not yet know as he ought to know. But if anyone loves God, he's known by God. You haven't seen that. I've seen that. I want to tell you something. What happened? Uh, it's been going on for a long time, but I think the, the watershed moment was in the mid-20th century when man split the atom. When man split the atom, Ronnie, they think and they thought and they still think we can do anything. We've unleashed this force, this power. We're smart enough to do that. We're smart enough to do anything. I, I'll tell you. <laughs> if any among you thinks he's wise in this age, let him become a fool that he might become wise. The wisdom of this world is folly to God. 
I'm telling you, we think we're so smart, we're spending, we're spending trillions of dollars trying to find life in the universe. We're so smart, we think that we can affect and therefore we can control God's creation. In so much as that we think we can affect and control the climate, we can affect and control storms. They've been trying that since the 50s. They've been trying to see clouds and kill storms and change this and change that, thinking they can do that. And they, and, and they think, we're so, we think we're so smart that we that we are the ones that's causing the climate to change. I just got to tell you, there's a big thing up in that sky. It's called the sun. Amen. <laughs> and if you want to know what affects this climate, you go out and look at that. It's been affecting it for a long time. If it shines too much, you're going to burn up. If it don't shine enough, you're going to freeze. Boom. I didn't need a PhD to tell you. <laughs> they even think they're smart enough to control the population. Now, I'll get back to that in a minute. But let me tell you, <laughs> I'm just looking at my notes. So we down streams and we build cities in the desert. We down, we down rivers. And so we built these cities in the desert. We built them on the ocean shore. Uh, we built cities on the sides of mountains, communities on the sides of mountains. We built cities and communities in volcano, volcanic and earthquake prone areas. You know why we did it? Because we thought we had the technology and the wisdom to sustain and survive in these areas long term. Do you understand this? That in Southern California, that's a, de that's a desert area. area. Las Vegas, Nevada is in a desert. Just get this in your mind. We damn these rivers because we said we can do this. We can change everything and make it fertile and green. Well, <laughs> we wondered then every year why. Why floods and storms and wildfires, this is just, along with drought and earthquake. They destroy and damage more every year than we have the resources and the ability to be. A miracle down under this hill is the lumber that's down there. You can't get lumber. That's a miracle. You know why you can't get lumber? Because they had wildfires. Because they had three or four hurricanes last year. Because they had floods in Louisiana. They had them again just recently. Yeah, what, what are we thinking? What are we thinking? What are we thinking? Because we're saying that the sea level is rising, and you can look at Houston, New Orleans, Miami, and other places like that, because the sea level is rising. That's not what's happening. What's happening is the ground is sinking because we built it on a marsh and on a swamp. When New Orleans floods, we say, oh my God, New Orleans is flooded. Well, it's built under sea level. And you can't hold back the sea. Only God can do that. You can't set the boundaries of the sea. Only God can do that. The man who builds his house on the sinking sand is a fool. And we've been building homes and been saying, God, why are you letting us? This is a natural disaster. It's a God. And yeah, because you're stupid enough to build your house on a swamp. And build your home on low land. It's going to sink. There's a tree out in my backyard, a huge oak tree. All around it, there's a depression all around it. The ground didn't wash away. The weight of that tree pushed that dirt down. You, you see what I'm saying? But we think we're smart in God. What are we thinking? What are we thinking? Listen, we, we're so smart that we define life. And we say when it begins, we say what value life has, what is valuable life, and what is not valuable life. Yes, that's right. I was listening to a teaching just last night about the theory of eugenics, which has been around since the 20th century. <coughs> and
And I just want to tell everybody in here right now that the founder of Planned Parenthood believed this. Okay? They believed that if you was not white and rich, you didn't deserve the living. The founder of Planned Parenthood believed that. So they came up with this thing, which had been around, but they popularized it, and now we fund it, and it's called abortion. And if you look at the statistics, there is minority and poor people are being aborted at a rate very much higher. Because, you know why? Because they said this life is more valuable than that life. Do you understand what I'm saying? We buy this stuff hook, line, and sinker and believe it and call it women's health care. What are we thinking? I'm going to tell you what we need to be thinking, that God's about tired of that. And he's, he's, he's tired. He's saying, that's enough, it's enough. There's 63 million babies in this country alone. And who am I? Who am I to go looking down and saying, where the word and where the not word? Valuable, valuable, valuable. Oh, that baby's not valuable. Who am I? Who, who do we think we are? What are we thinking we're doing? What are we, what are we doing with our values and with our lives? We, we're so smart that we define, uh, we defy biology and we defy scripture by destroying the fact, the fact of male and female, and we're defining an infinite number of genders. Because we're smarter than God. We're smarter than God in, in, in Genesis where he said, let us make man in our image. Let male and female create right. But we're smarter than that. We're smarter than God. Lord help us. Now I'm going to tell you something that gets close to everybody this last year. We have so many times as a human race Hailed and proclaimed our dominance over diseases and pestilence. But last year showed us we, we hadn't done anything. A new one come out. Strain number 19. And show us we're not as smart as we think. And everybody now is broken. Say, we got a vaccine. We done. We beat it. There'll be another one that'll come. I'm sorry. It's coming. You know why? Because when I was a kid, you, you, I had the measles. I had the mumps. I had all this stuff. But they got vaccines for that now. But guess what? They're, they're starting to break through. Measles has come back. Months has come back. Rubella has come back. All these things. They said, we have eradicated them from the world. They're coming back. Who do we think we are? What are we thinking? That we're that smart. God has shown us. God has shown us. Listen, we have redefined marriage and relationships. And in doing so, we've destroyed the family. <clears throat> we, we've said, this is what marriage is. God said marriage and relationships of an intimate nature are between a man and a woman in the bounds of marriage. Okay? Now you may be sitting there saying, well, you know, what do you mean, you know? Well, I'm just saying that's God's definition. If you're going to have an intimate relationship, you need to be in the bounds of marriage. That's what he said. Okay? And it needs to be a man and a woman. Just because the state legalizes it doesn't mean God has blessed it. Now I'm going to tell you what I'm saying this morning is considered wrong and hate speech and backwards and all kinds of stuff. It, it, 
it's always, but I'm telling you, we're trying to think we're smarter than God. Right. I'm not the smartest man, but I'm wise enough to know that he is King of Kings. Yes, he and he is Lord of Lords. Yes. And that he is God Almighty. Yes. That I can't do nothing. Else. I couldn't save myself, he saved me. I couldn't rescue myself, he came and found me. Yes. That's who he is. And here's another thing. <clears throat> that I see so much now, and I see people pushing this. What, what are we thinking when we think we're better than somebody else? The people who, who devise this wicked thing to say this has value, that person has value, that, that is a person who is foolish and hateful in their heart, and they're defying the Lord God Almighty. Because in Romans 12, verse three, it says, uh, for by the grace given to me, this is Paul saying, I say to everyone among you not to think of himself more highly than he ought to. Amen. Amen. Galatians 6, verse 2 says, Bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. Look again, if anyone thinks he's something, when he is nothing, he deceives himself. Yes. Why do certain shades of skin color think that they're better than other shades of skin color. Genesis 1.27 says we're all made in the image and the likeness of God. And let, me, and let me tell you, if you're thinking that way, let me tell you something. We're all descended from Adam. And the blood that runs through us is red. Yeah. Do you hear what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. And so people are pushing this difference of hate. I'm seeing it right now. Difference in the family. I'm seeing it, it all over our country. And I'm seeing it right now as people stand up and say the Palestinians need to be wiped out. And people stand up and say the Jewish people need to be wiped out. What are we thinking? What are we thinking? See, Peter had this problem with Gentiles. And in Acts 10, verse 34, said, Peter opened his mouth and said, Truly I understand, see, he got right thinking, that God shows no partiality. But in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. What are we thinking? What are we thinking when we think we're better than somebody else because of the color of our skin or because of the amount of money in our bank account? Is it because you got money? Is it because you have riches? Is it because your family come over on the Mayflower? Is it because you had somebody that was real smart, made a lot of money, and you dumb as a rock, and you just think? <laughs> Paul said in Galatians 3, verse 28, there is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free, there is no male and female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. I am not talking about gender. I am talking about the value that God put in you. And if you will fear God and trust God, He puts you in the same boat with the richest man on earth that fears God and trusts God. He puts you in the same boat with the beggar and the leper in an, in an Indian leper colony. In the state of India, he puts you in the same. If they fear and acknowledge God, we're all one in Christ Jesus, glory to God. What man has done to separate God who brought back together in his blood? Amen. We cannot do that. What are we thinking? What are we thinking when we redefine uh, the character and the very essence of God? Can I might preach a little bit longer today. Oh, I'm on it. <laughs> I'm going to spit this one out so I can move on to another one. Acts 17, verse 29. Being then God's offspring, we ought not to think, we ought not to think that the divine being is like gold or silver or stone. Don't you see this? An image formed by the art and the imagination of man. This is what he said. And we need to hear this. This was 2,000 years ago. He said the times of ignorance, God had overlooked. 
But now, he says, he commands all people everywhere, everywhere to repent because he has fixed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed. And then in 1 Timothy verse 6, uh, chapter 6, verse 3. If anyone teaches a different doctrine and does not agree with the sound words of our Lord Jesus Christ and the teaching that accords with godliness, he's puffed up with conceit and understands nothing. Yes. I mean, I'm just going to say something right here. If you're, if you're having sex outside of marriage, if you believe that's okay, and if you believe it's okay, to have multiple genders. And if you believe that it's okay for uh, same sex to be married, I want to tell you something right now. I do not judge you. I'm not your judge. I want to tell you something right now. I love you. And because I'm loving, I'm telling you what the Word of God says. When God says don't look down on somebody, He means people that think different than you. So I'm not going to stand up and condemn you or nor am I going to judge you because God saved me, a wretched sinner. And, and except for the grace of God, I'd be on my way to hell. I ain't judging nobody. Because he said right there, Paul said, there's a day coming when he will. But until that time, the grace and mercy of God is available to everybody. I'm telling you what the word of God says. But I, I listen, I love you. And I care for you. I don't care if you shack it up with 15 different people. I, I, it doesn't matter to me. I'm still going to love you. I come to love. I didn't come to kill you. I didn't come to destroy you. I didn't come to judge you. Thank God you can't do that to me and I can't do it to you. Because I judge you according to my sin. My sin would be okay. Yours wouldn't. I just want to clarify that. I like to do that when I'm preaching on a heavy subject like this. Because I don't want you to walk out and understand, well, he hates me. No, I don't hate you. I love you. I love you. Jesus loves you. Yes. Listen, I had to see. I had to see the things that I, I had to see it. The revelation of God that came to me to see. And there are many things in my life that God has saved me from and rescued me. And then I was able to see it. I thank God for that. That's what God wants to do with you today. And by saying that, I'm saying we cannot change the very essence and character of God. If God says man and woman, it's man and woman. If God says it's inside marriage, it's inside marriage. God said that. I didn't say it. And because of my weakness, and because of my opinion, and because of my thought, God is not going to change even though he loves me, he will not change. So why are we changing what God says? You ever had somebody come up to you and say, oh, well, I thought you was a Christian. Mm -hmm. Now, they're not a Christian. But now they're Christian to tell you how you're supposed to act. Mm -hmm. Well, this, yeah. Christians don't do that. Christians don't do that. I'm like, how do you know what a Christian does? You, don't, you, don't, you can't even spell Christian. <laughs> I use you to smile. And as a pastor, huh, every now and then I got I get people that are not Christians try to define my role as a pastor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they, ain't, they ain't never been a pastor and they ain't not even a Christian, but they trying to tell me how I'm supposed to do it. Everybody's had that. Yeah. Tell you what a Christian's supposed to do. Well, that's how right. right. you know. Right. In that, you know what I'm saying? So why do we think then we can tell God how he's supposed to act? Why, why do we think we can tell God this is the way you're supposed to do it? You're, because it's me, you say you love me, uh, I'm going to go out and do this. I'm going to go out here and hold up everybody coming down that road, but I'm tired on what I'm getting. <laughs> I know you'd be good with that. We have defined and changed the character of God. We, when we do that, it is it's no different than if we cast metal, we carved wood, or we sculpted stone and bowed down to it. It's the same thing. It's called idolatry. 
When we do that, we're not doing it. We're not following this God. We're following the God we made. God does not do what our emotions and our intellect dictate. He doesn't do that. I, I've heard this so many times. I, I've heard people that are supposed to be very smart say, well, now, if Jesus was here today, I believe he'd be okay with this. And when he, because he's a, he was love. But I'm going to tell you something. Jesus is here. Yeah. <laughs> He's here. In John chapter 1, he said he is the word going to God. He is here. I know what he's saying. I don't have to imagine where well, Jesus would, wouldn't because of the, of the times have changed and people have evolved. And when he said that, it was because of the place he be. No, my friend, he's the same today, yesterday, and forever. Amen. Jesus has not changed. He hasn't gone anywhere. He is here. I know it because he lives in me. Glory to God. And he's here. And his testimony and his word is very clear and is concise. And his word is revealed to me by the power of the Holy Spirit. So I need to stop the time. God, based on my weakness and my sin, Hebrews 13, 8 says that he's the same. It says this, Jesus Christ is the same today, yesterday, and forever. I want to tell you all something. I love to hear these drums holler. You know what they're doing? They preach. I'm talking a lot. They're preaching with me. I love it. Some of them making more noise than y'all making. Y'all need to make a little bit more. Y'all need to get up and say amen. These babies are on. I love it. <laughs> y'all let them go in on, but I like to preach the two o'clock. <laughs> well, no, if I did that after a while, they quit, they quit amen and they start saying, hey, you need to shut up. I love it. Yeah, she'll be, she'll, be, she'll go. She'll say, I see you. <laughs> so here's the warning. We need to stop defining God based on our right. and sin. We need to conform to him, not the other way around. <laughs> Second Corinthians 3, 18, I'm going to read that again. And we all with unveiled face beholding the glory of God are being transformed are being transformed. We are being transformed. See, I ain't made it yet. Ain't nobody in here made it yet. Right. We're all being changed. Moment by moment. Glory to glory. Revelation to revelation. Into the same image from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. Romans 12 verse 2. Don't be conformed to the world but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. And I'm going to talk about that next week. That by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Colossians 3, verse 9. Do, don't lie to one another. Don't. Let's don't lie to one another. Seeing that you put off the old self with its practices and have put on the new self which is being renewed in knowledge after the image of its creator. I'm going to tell you today, you need God to be God. I preached it the other week. We need a Psalm 91 God. I don't need any other definition of him. I need that definition that comes from his word. You need God to be God. You don't need him to, to change when you change because you're fickle. One day you'll be up, and the next day you'll be down. You need Amen. God to be the same. You need God. I don't need a God that comes out of my imagination. I mean, it's my creation. I need a God that will not fail. Because any other God will fail and lead to destruction. I need a God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Amen. I need a God that was the God that Mary Magdalene. Gave her. I need a God that saw that kiss up in that tree. I, I need a God that raised the Lazarus from the dead. 
You hear me? Yeah. That's the kind of God I need. I don't need a made up God. Yeah. I don't need a philosophical God. I don't need a God that goes with the latest flow and ad. I need the God yeah. of the Bible. I need the one that delivered Daniel. I need the one that walked on the water. I need the one that, get, that got Peter out of prison. I need the one that rescued Paul when he was floating on a piece of wood. I need that God. I need the God that conquered death, hell, and the grave and rose on the third day. I need the God that on this day, the day of Pentecost, came and filled his church with power and cloven tongues of fire and endued us with the power of God, with revelation and strength. He saved my soul, my friend. And he can save your soul. He can save your young and soul. He can save your mama, your daddy, your brother, and your sister. He can save all mankind. He can save the Jewish people in Israel. He can save the Palestinians on the other side. He can save in Russia, in China, in New York City, in Washington, D.C., and in Monroe, Alabama. He's the God of salvation, and he can save your soul. Glory to God. Please stand with me this morning. I'm finishing. Now listen. I want you to take advantage of this. Write it down and then put it under here. And just leave it here. And as Ronnie said, put a mark on it so you know it's When it gets at you, you can come get it. And God's going to move. Yes. Yes. I believe that. I want you to bow your head with me. I feel the anointing of the Holy Spirit. I've, I've said a lot. But listen, I didn't come to condemn, neither did Jesus. Amen. He said, I came to save the world, not to condemn the world. Yes. The only way you'll be, leave here condemned is if you don't believe in Jesus. That's right. Amen. And you don't believe that he's true, and you don't believe that he's coming again. You, then you condemn yourself. I don't do it. And I, I, the furthest thing people say, preacher, you stepped on my toes. I said, I'm missing. I was aiming for your heart. Amen. <laughs> I'm, I'm praying that God touched your heart this morning. Amen. I'm not praying that God made you feel guilty. Yes. I'm not praying that God made you feel condemned. I'm not praying that God hung you out over the hill and say, come to me or burn, turn or burn. I'm not saying any of that. I don't want that. What I want you to do is get a revelation of the loving Savior of God, Jesus Christ. Who has changed and transformed my life and can do the same for you. Yeah. And that's what he wants to do today. To save your soul. Yeah. First thing. Before anything else. Before he rescues you from the mess you've made. Before he does anything else, he wants to save you. He wants to be your Lord. He wants to, you call him Father. He'll call you son. He wants to call you to call him daddy. He'll call you daughter. That's what he wants today. That's why Jesus came. To seek and to save the lost. And then to destroy every work of the devil. Yes. So if you need Jesus as your Lord and Savior. If you're not sure today, I want you to just lift your hand. Let God see that. God sees it. Anybody else? God sees it. Now, if you want to be more like Jesus. How about lifting your hand every day? I'm not even looking around. I got mine lifted. Yeah. Let's pray together. Yeah. Why don't you pray from your heart? You pray, you pray to Jesus, and I pray to Jesus. We'll all pray together. Lord, I love you so much today. I thank you, God, for all you're doing, all that I can see. But most of all, thank you, God, for what I can't see. Because behind the scenes, you're working in, may, in many mighty ways. I bless you, O oh Lord. I call you King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Lord, if I have changed and altered uh, who you are in my heart, I repent of that, God. Oh, God, I repent of that. I need you to be who you are and who you say you are. God, I need a delivering God, a changing God, one who has set me free. So, Lord, I ask you to help me, Lord, never to forget that. God, draw me closer to you. Let me go from glory to glory to glory. Let me go from revelation to revelation to revelation. Let me see more of you, God, till that day you're done with me here. You call me home. Yes. 
God, I thank you that you're doing it for me. God, I thank you for doing it for my brothers and sisters. And God, I thank you that you're going to change and transform our families, one person at a time. But you're going to do it. God, I love you so much. Oh, Jesus, I thank you. I pray it all, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, the author and the finisher of my faith, the one who lifts my head, the one who called me, anointed me, and carried me. I bless you, oh, Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Give God a good glory. His presence is here, still here. And you don't have to leave him here. He don't just stay here. When you get in your car, he's going to walk with you. He's going to go with you. Hey, thank you all for supporting and again. You can give in the offering on the way out. If you've got a prayer need, remember, put it here. It's, God is going to move. Amen. Love you all. God bless you.